Bollinger and Mabillard, or B&M, is a manufacturer often talked about by coaster enthusiasts, and while many will debate if the rides are forceless or intense, smooth or rough, none of that matters. B&M is the best coaster manufacturer for reasons most coaster enthusiasts don't even consider or know about. Here are 10 things you probably didn't know about B&M coasters that makes them the best in the world. Consign Controls while many ride operators dislike consign's control systems due to them being mostly copy and paste, this brings many advantages to a park. For one, ride operator training is simplified, as if your park has two or more B&M coasters, a new ride operator can be trained with controls much faster at another B&M. Maintenance also will have an easier time diagnosing problems with the ride, as if they understand one B&M coaster, all others will be similar. Modern consign panels also display weather data, so ride operators have a better understanding of the weather developing around their ride. Finally, as all B&M controls are so universal, if a part breaks on one B&M coaster, the park can take a part from another to fix it, leading to more uptime for the park's most popular B&M. Lift Trim Brake One of the things I fear most when operating a ride is having to do an evac from the top of the lift hill. Not because of the height, but because of what can happen when the weight in a train shifts as guests are let out. This video was taken during an evac on a Vacoma coaster. Oh, he sits up with cables, see that? B&M, being the geniuses they are, thought of this and on all their rides that are prone to something like this happening, they installed a single trim brake at the end of the lift hill that can be closed to hold a train in place if it ever had to be evac'd from that point. Capacity Now I have a lot to say about capacity in B&M coasters, so much that it makes up multiple points on this list. But for a good overview of B&M coasters capacity, let's look at two coasters opening this year. Orion, a B&M Giga Coaster at Kings Island, and Jersey Devil, an RMC Raptor at Six Flags Great Adventure. Kings Island and Six Flags Great Adventure get similar attendance. Orion has a manufacturer specified capacity of 1,650 riders per hour, thanks to its four cross seating and three trains. Meanwhile, Jersey Devil can do a measly 612 riders per hour with four trains. And just to drive this point home further, at Kings Dominion, the ride with the highest ridership in 2019 was not their critically acclaimed RMC or their super intense Intamin Giga Coaster, but it was instead their relocated B&M Floorless Coaster. Parks care a lot about capacity, as a high capacity coaster makes the line move much faster and keeps guests happy. And when it comes to capacity, no one does it better than B&M. Vest Restraints B&M did not invent the vest restraint, but they did perfect them. And while many coaster enthusiasts dislike vest restraints, there's no denying that the public loves them. And at the end of the day, it's the general public that decides if a coaster is a success or not, not the enthusiasts. But the genius behind the vest restraint goes deeper than this. Almost all vest style restraints use a hydraulic cylinder to lock in place. B&M uses two cylinders per seat, but not at the same time. Instead, B&M's hydraulic restraints alternate which cylinder is used each cycle. This effectively halves the wear and tear on each cylinder, leading to more seats being open to riders and less downtime. Self-clearing blocks. Though Planet Coaster would have you believe that all coasters can simply set up the next block at the top of the lift hill and then automatically restart when the next block is clear, this is not the case. If you don't understand blocks, check out a video I've recently made explaining them, linked in the description. Before B&M coasters debuted self-clearing blocks in the 90s, when a coaster stopped at the top of the lift hill due to the next block being occupied, a ride operator would have to run to the base of the lift and restart it. After B&M's innovation, their rides not only restarted automatically after the next block was clear, but they would also automatically slowly jog the lift hill until the block ahead of the ride was clear, leading to less setups in the first place. Other manufacturers like Aero experimented with this as far back as the late 1970s, with rides like Gemini jogging the lift for the next train after a setup somewhere else on the ride had already occurred. But it was B&M who perfected this into the safe and efficient method used today. Light Curtains B&M is not the only manufacturer to use light curtains, but they do use them more than other manufacturers and in different roles. A light curtain is essentially a beam of light that is shot from one sensor to another. 
If this light is blocked, the sensor will not receive the light signal, and therefore it will see that there's something in the way. Think of the sensors you probably have in your garage that prevent a garage door from closing if there's something or someone in the way. The light curtains on B&M coasters work in essentially the same way. They're placed in any area of the station where a guest could accidentally wander into the ride area, such as where the station and the catwalk meet. If this light curtain is broken, the ride will not allow a train to be dispatched until the operator acknowledges this on the control panel. This is mostly used on newer B&M coasters. Rolling Blocks, another capacity-related problem solved by B&M. On most coasters, when a train is leaving the station, the train behind it has to wait until the first train has completely left the station before it can advance into the station, wasting valuable seconds that could have been used loading the next train. Not on newer B&Ms. Newer B&Ms feature a rolling block that essentially moves the station block around a moving train, allowing one train to exit and another to enter the station area simultaneously. That's how you do good operations. Rolling blocks, baby. Transfer tracks. While most of us think of transfer tracks as just a place where roller coaster trains go when they're not in use, they actually serve a much wider variety of purposes. One of their biggest uses is maintenance. And while on other coasters the train rests on its wheels much like it does on the normal track, B&M coasters are different. On every B&M coaster there are small wheels mounted off to the side of the train that are used only when transferring. These wheels rest in a small track of their own on the storage part of the transfer track, taking all weight off the normal wheels, allowing maintenance to freely inspect and replace them with ease. This leads to both less downtime and a safer experience for guests. They don't sell prototypes. By this, I mean unfinished or poorly thought out prototypes. Other companies like Intamin and RMC may seem to be the best choice for a park because of how different and innovative their rides are, but this is not always a good thing. Intamin and RMC rides, especially second gen RMCs like Steel Vengeance and Twisted Timbers, are known for their extended downtime. B&M simply will not sell a coaster unless they are confident with the design and its reliability. Also, in the rare event a B&M coaster has a large problem, B&M will be happy to come out to the park and find the most cost-effective solution. Other manufacturers simply cannot match this. They think of literally everything. Here's just a few things that come to mind. Ever wonder what those tubes are that run down from the top of a B&M invert train? Well, those tubes take water that collects on the top of the train and transport it to the ground. Without them, water would pool on the top of the trains and guests would get soaked when the ride ran after a rainstorm. Most of their B&M inverts have lowering floors. This is not just for looks. Having a lowering floor not only looks cool, but allows the ride to have no maximum height limit for riders, as there's no risk for the taller rider hitting their feet on the station floor when the train is moving. The massive gate at the front of the station attached to the lowering floor also prevents guests from wandering off the ride platform. These are just a few of the things that come to mind. I'm sure there are many more that I forgot about or don't know about. Those are just a few of the great things B&M does that's super important from a park's perspective but almost unnoticeable from a coaster enthusiast's perspective. These reasons are why I believe B&M is currently the greatest coaster manufacturer and there's no other manufacturers that are even coming close to overtaking them. To a park, working with B&M is the best option for guest safety, capacity, maintenance, and ride longevity.